Welcome to my channel. This is the second of three war songs or war related songs that I've been asked to react to. This one is by James Blunt and the title is No Bravery. And again, I don't know if this is going to show up or not. I'll probably get copyright dings by YouTube and it'll take three or four days for it to show up. But I've been asked to react to it, so that's what I'm going to do. Before I do that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for creating a, a, a wonderful atmosphere. I just love the interactions I'm having in the comments and the, and the people that I'm meeting. I know it's not face to face, but I'm so impressed by you. And I really do appreciate you coming to my channel. So thank you. So this is James Blunt, No Bravery. Hi, I'm Lieutenant James Blunt, and this is the first installment of my video diary. Today, we deploy to the Balkans. We don't know how long for, and we don't know what our job is yet. But I'm going to get as much of it on camera as I possibly can. There are children standing here, arms outstretched into the sky. Tears drying on their face, he has been here. Brothers lie in shallow graves, fathers lost without a trace. A nation blind to their disgrace, since he's been here. And I see no bravery, no bravery in your eyes anymore, only sadness. And I see no bravery, no bravery in your eyes anymore, only sadness, only sadness. Houses burnt beyond repair The smell of death is in the air A woman weeping in despair Says he has been here Trace are lighting up the sky It's another family's turn to die A child afraid to even cry out Says he has been here And I see no bravery Sadness, and I see no bravery, no bravery in your eyes anymore. Only sadness, only sadness. into the sky but no one asked them question why he has been here old men kneel to accept their fate wives and daughters cut and raped a generation drenched in hate says he has been here and I see no bravery no bravery in your eyes anymore only sad Okay.
I should tell you something about me. Because you need to understand where I'm coming from. I've never been in combat. I didn't serve in Vietnam during the Vietnam War. I was safely ensconced on the East Coast of the United States doing secret work. So I have no personal knowledge of war. But I have read a lot and I have a lot of friends who have been in combat. I lost my favorite cousin, Donald Carlson, during the Vietnam War. He was killed by one of those god-awful military euphemisms, friendly fire. <laughs> friendly fire, think about that, friendly fire. How is fire friendly? It killed Donald. Uh, he was on patrol. They were in the jungle. And if you know anything about Vietnam, it has what's called a trippy, triple canopy jungle. So there's three different lengths of trees growing. And the, it's almost like nighttime during the middle of the day. And so if you're up in the air in a plane or a helicopter, you can't see the troops on the ground. You can't see anything. All you can do is go by radio signals. And they were, another military euphemism, engaged with the enemy. In other words, men were shooting at each other, trying to kill each other. And they called for air support. And a helicopter came in. And they did what's called pop smoke. They uh, threw a smoke grenade that has a, a specific color to it to tell the door gunner in the helicopter where to shoot. And apparently the door gunner was new. He had just been in Vietnam a short period of time. And he shot on the wrong side of the smoke and he killed Donald. He died in the helicopter on the way to the hospital, to the medevac. It's always been a tremendous iron, irony to me how the military can use terms that sanitize and make acceptable what is unacceptable. In this particular video, I couldn't help but see all those children waving and think their parents are probably dead. Because we know what happened in the Balkans. They just slaughtered thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And that's, that's one of the awful ironies of war is that because there are evil people in the world who are willing to kill those of us who are not evil have to go and kill. <laughs> I mean, it, it's insanity. It's complete, utter insanity. And yet, what choice do you have? What choice did we have when Hitler was slaughtering millions and millions of people, not just Jews? He killed homosexuals. He killed Poles. He killed a lot of people. And he killed a lot of Jews. What, what were we supposed to do? I mean, stand by and just let him continue? No, you can't do that. And yet, by the mere act of resisting, you participate in the carnage. And you participate in the evil. And you participate in the, the killing of innocent lives of people who had no involvement whatsoever in the conflict. They just were in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's, you know, I wish there were a way that we could end war, that we could never have war again. But as long as there is a devil on the earth and as long as there are humans who are willing to be evil, we have no choice. 
and it's like he said there's no bravery in war oh there's individual bravery and acts of, of courage but there is no bravery in war there's no bravery in killing it's oh I could tell you some stories but no I'm not going to do that but it's just it changes a person permanently the things that they see the things that they do forever alter them as a human and while it is entirely possible to live a perfectly normal life after having been to war, it is not possible to erase the images that you have in your head that will haunt you for the, for the remainder of your life. It's just not possible. You can, you can deaden the pain. Over time, you can lessen the memories. You can, you can suppress them and you can uh, smooth out the, the rough edges of them but they never go away and it's a scar that that no human should ever have so let's face it war sucks it absolutely sucks it's the most horrible thing men can do to men and women and children who suffer innocently and yes I know women fight too hmm. oh boy again his voice is almost angelic I don't know what you... I don't think you could even call him a tenor. He's almost an alto. It's amazing how high his voice is. But the message that he's delivering is uh, haunting. Disturbing. Hmm. Oh. Well... In another world, another time, I pray for you. <clears throat> I pray that you will live an abundant life. I pray that you'll be healthy and that you'll live a long time and that God will keep you safe from harm. And I pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I pray that you'll be anxious for nothing but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, You'll make your request known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out. <laughs>